Good afternoon from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well today. Sending loads of love to you as usual. Right, it's horror time Friday video uh, for those that are interested, of course. And we get back round to um, killers of a different, different kind of nature. But what does it all mean? Who's morally correct? Do we really care? But these two here, I don't think too many people will lose sleep over the two um, incidents I'm describing now. Now, we remember um, Sarah Payne. She lost her life tragically to that scumbag Roy Whiting. That's how that Sarah's law came about at the expense of what happened to that little girl at the hands of Mr. Whiting, right? And we know um, from programs on what we've seen in the media, the family's mother, etc., were never ever the same after such um, a terrible, terrible uh, murder of their little beloved girl, Sarah Payne. Right, so Roy Whiting was in the category A's. Of course, he's a Rule 43 merchant, but he was housed on the hospital on this incident here. And another man that I met twice during my life, right, on the first life sentence he was serving, and down the seg somewhere else after he got a new one when I was on a recall, right? Gary Vinter from Middlesbrough, one of the most seriously dangerous uh, men. It's got to be said that I've ever heard about or seen, if you get what I mean, right? So he manages to get over to the hospital wing where Roy Whiting is, right? And these two incidents are absolute fact, you know, and it comes out of his own mouth as well, um, Vinter. So he's over there. Whether he had a fallout with um, J uh, Roy Whiting or not, um, or either it was set up um, by staff, etc. It wouldn't be the first uh, time in life this kind of thing happens. But he was about three doors away from Roy Whiting on the hospital wing and made up the bulk, um, the toilet brushes are white with a little bit of hair at the bottom, but they're white plastic, right? He managed, because it's not, I, I, I've had tools like this in my life with that same toilet brush. It was sharpened into a jagged edge to make a seriously, seriously, dangerous dangerous weapon and he sneaks up on Roy Whiting first thing in the morning when they were unlocking for breakfast that kind of thing and went into the cell um planned meticulously by Vinter and he went in there and took out Roy Whiting's eye facts right um he tried to kill him that is absolutely fact as well Vinter ain't taking no prisoners on this second life term that he's got for the murder sadly of a lovely lady that tried to help him on his first life sentence who they you know they planned to marry or they got married and then you know he got recalled and then came back and done what he did when he came out from that recall on that first life came out from that and murdered the poor lady um there's going to be a program on mainstream tv soon about um such persons that i'm talking about in this video now he did that to roy whiting and he got a round of applause but the moral code of of such uh men really to maybe you don't like roy whiting's crimes none of us like his crimes and would want him to die um a painful death if you get what i mean but he murdered a lady who was a, a, a do-gooder for him that was just doing her best for him and thought she could change him if you get what i mean now to clarify that fight that you asked me about with Newell, inmate Newell, right? That was on Woodhill, in Woodhill, on the exercise yard, in full view of everyone. And the one bit I forgot to tell you is that Newell was already, um, I think he got convicted or he went to court over killing another man in jail um, around about the same time, a few years earlier or whatever. So he was as deadly as Vinter, if you get what I mean. These things are not explained properly sometimes, but... Um, Gary Vinter went for him on the yard and took his eye out, um, gave him brain injuries and went to kill him in front of everybody on the yard in Wood Hill. He's on the final stand in there, Gary Vinter. Remember this very, very important um, bit about, you know, the, the, the emotional makeup of such a man as well. Uncle Yami suggests um, that when he did that bad deed to that lovely lady, he handed himself in a police station. He is on the final stand in there. I can't see it lasting with him. A man left with no hope with his conscience, if there is one, is going all out. And he seems to be able to have um, the knack of striking first, which is always a deadly recipe, if you get what I mean. But I'm clarifying that, um, especially for those down in North East today. Definitely, definitely one of the most dangerous men that I ever met in my whole life.